Oh, hey guys, just making sure that I have my pulse because today I got the R8, RX 6800 Sapphire Pulse. Let's get it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and unbox this bad boy real quick. It says uh, 4K Ultra HD Gaming, 16 gigabyte memory, GDDR6, and PCIe 4.0 support. So let's see what's inside. Gotta be gentle. <laughs> I got stuck. So, so far it's just some brown cardboard box that's not impressive since I had to pay $900 for this freaking card and it's only the 6800 they raised the prices on after tariffs so here's the booklet tell me how to install it I don't think I need that but let's go ahead and check this out Damn, check that out. As you can see, it's got the sapphire lettering right there, Radeon. This is the reference card. This isn't the nitro. And it's got one HDMI and three display ports. Uh, that's pretty nice. It's got a bio switch for quiet and for um, turbo, I guess. And it's already switched on right there. And then this is a 16 pin, <laughs> which is a, a little bit more than the 12 pin of the NVIDIA's cards or whatever their setup is. But. Let's check this bad boy out right now. So on the top we have the RX 6800, the Sapphire Pulse, and on the bottom we got the Gigabyte 5600 XT, both Radeon. But one is the aftermarket or the AIB card, and then this one is pretty much the reference card for AMD. Um, how much did the Gigabyte cost you? Uh, 289. 289. So this is 289 before taxes, MSRP pretty much. This one was supposed to be 590 MSRP, but I had to pay about $900 for this bad boy after tariffs. So, I mean, it's pretty crazy. Before we go to the comparison of the one you guys are probably here for mostly, um, I'm gonna compare it to the RX 480, the Radeon, it's a four gigabyte reference card. I had this card for many years now. It's, it treated me good for the long run. It's lasted forever and um, I've gotten good gaming out of it, but it's starting to show its age. It can't run games at 2K 60 frames as much anymore. Um, I used to run that at medium settings, but it, it's a good card. It's lasted me a while, but I sold it on eBay for $220. So since someone was willing to buy it for that price, I pretty much had to let it go. But you're gonna be missed, RX 480. I'm surprised you were able to do what you were able to do for the longest time. And so of course, I have to compare, of course I got to compare the old school and the new school. Look, it does a 
huge difference. Jeez, it's about half the size of that. But you will be missed. 480. So this is how the 3060 Ti looks inside of the case. It came with the GPU mount, so it doesn't sag. It's also 16 pin. And then there's the back of it. To build up to the the GPU comparisons, I'm going to show you guys the differences of the boxes. Of course, Nvidia's got that lime green. And then the 6800s is a little skinnier. So the MSI I had gotten for MSRP with taxes and shipped, it came out to 550. It came in this nice black box. It came with the GPU support. It came with this envelope. You know, they, they went all out on their presentation. Look at this. Thank you. Installation guide. Made for gamers and creators. How to upgrade your new graphics cards. Look at that. All nice. The foam in there. They even, it even came with a little um, plastic to cover the the GPU card. The bottom of it were inserts so it doesn't mess up. Sorry guys on the autofocus. And this is what the Sapphire sent me. So this brown box looks generic already. Looks like they already don't care. This little paper. And this quick installation guide. So compare, comparing these two, which one looks like the one that cost $880? I bet you're not going to say that one. But obviously they're different tier cards, but still. I feel like for the 900 I had to pay pretty much for this, I should have gotten at least a GPU support. Or at least the minimum something to cover the bottom of the pin, or the, of the GPU where it inserts at. But of course, but of course, we're coming down to what it really matters to is the actual card. Look how beefy this MSI AIB card is. And, um, sorry guys, this is not the reference card. This is the Sapphire Pulse one. Um, I made it error earlier in the episode. So please forgive me, but check, check out that beef. Look at that thickness. That's a nice sandwich right there. But, yeah, this one doesn't come with any RGB, or, yeah, I don't think so. Maybe right there it lights up, it looks like. We'll find out. But, it's surely lacking compared to this NVIDIA one. And th th this one does have a BIOS switch in my pretty previous, sorry, not pretty, in my previous 3060 Ti video. Um, I was looking for the switch on here, but it doesn't have it, which is fine. This card ran pretty well. The back is nice. And um, this one has RGB right here and right here. And it also has it right there. And then the letters light up too. So, looks wise on the graphics card, the 3060 Ti has a beat, I believe, the MSI Gaming Trio. But performance wise is what matters the most. So let's check that out, but first I got to install the Sapphire. So I guess we can get down to the specs of the 6800 Sapphire Pulse. It is running on RDNA 2 technology, um, that is the new, that is the newer uh, version of this. Big Navi was the, the nickname they used for it for a while. It does have a 7 nanometer uh, processing chip, so I'm not, I don't remember the exact size of the NVIDIA one, so I wish I could help on that. But, um, its base clock is 1800 uh, millihertz. Um, that can boost all the way up to 2170, supposedly. Its game clock says it's 1950, so 
when you're gaming it, it's probably at 1950, and then it could probably spike up higher if you overclock it. And like like um, I showed you on the video, it does have the switch there, but I'm gonna leave it on to you know the highest performance. Um, it is 16 gigabyte of uh, memory, of virtual RAM, so that should get that that is a lot compared to Nvidia's um, what is it 10 gigabyte, 12 gigabyte? No, it's 10 gigabyte for the 3060 Ti, and then I think the regular 3060 is 12. No, actually, I'm sorry. The 3060 Ti has 8 gigabytes. The 3070 and 3080 have um, 10. I mean, I guess don't quote me on that, but that should be. Um, that's, that seems like it's kind of right. Um, let me see how much watts it says that this uses. I guess it doesn't, but the length of this card is um, 313 um, millimeters. It should be able to fit in your case, at least in the Li and Li 2, Lanquo 2. So I would measure it before you go out and buy it. But it says that it, it, it gives up to 250 watts. Um, it recommends a minimum of uh, 650 watt PSU. I mean, I don't know exactly what you're running or how strong your CPU is. That can help determine it as well. Um, it has two 8 pins. And it's got the three display ports and the one HDMI. So DirectX 12 and then GD GDDR6 um, compatibility. So, I mean, it seems like a solid card. But we'll find out soon. So right here we have the Sapphire Pulse RX 6800 specs. It's at 2310 uh, megahertz boost clock, 16 gigabyte DDR6 memory. It is on the RDNA 2 architecture. Um, it has one HDMI port, 2.0, three display ports, 1.4, and the minimum specs that you should use uh, PSU is 650 watt. And of course, we're going to be comparing the MSI RTX 3060 Ti Gaming Trio X. It has 1830 megahertz boost clock, 8 gigabyte DDR6 memory. It's on the Ampere architecture. Same amount of HDMI's, display ports, and the same um, recommended minimum specs. These do run stronger, but we shall see. So the first test that we had was the MSI Combustor. Uh, that might be a little biased since it is an MSI card, but the Sapphire um, Pulse at 1440 and at 1080 was way behind on the Gaming Trio. This is the biggest difference I have. Everything else is usually behind. But the Gaming Trio at 1440 and at 1080, uh, 52 frames and 63 frames respectively, that's a big jump compared to the other two. Um, like I said, maybe since it's the same company but gears 5 the ultra preset benchmark had 1440p 88 frames per second 1080p 87.6 frames per second the um, gaming trio 1440p 70.9 frames and then the 1080p at 86.6 so this was the benchmark and multiplayer i get a little higher frames but i wanted to make this as even as i can and this is the best way i could check it out so gears is more amd biased at horizon 4 is also more amd biased the 1440 P is at 115 frames per second. The 1080p is at 144 frames per second. And um, this is the highest I got on the Pulse. Um, the Gaming Trio 1440p, 117 frames per second. The Gaming Trio at 1080p is 133 frames per second. It's still not too bad for that card, but you can see the big difference on this one. And um, the Sci Fire Pulse 6800 at 1440p was 97 frames per second. At 1080p, 120 frames per second. Um, the Gaming Trio, 1440p, 78 frames per second. With DLSS on, 95 frames per second. Um, 1080p, 101 frames per second, 118 with DLSS on. DLSS, I recommend for co um, Cold War. It, it looks really good and it gives you way more frames. It's a game changer. On Warzone, there is no DLSS. The 6800 at 1440p was at 105 frames per second. The 6800 at 1080p was 131 frames per second. Um, the Gaming Trio at 1440p was at 104 frames per second, and the 1080p 109 frames per second. Uh, I, I did this by running around and playing. Um, I didn't go to the Gulag. If I did, I had to restart the bench, the test results. But more or less, you run around anyways on Warzone. It's always random, so I guess that's a good one. Cyberpunk tested this hard, this card pretty hard. Um, DLSS was, is a must. The 6800 at 1440p was 59 frames per second. The 6800 at 1080p was 83 frames per second. The 3060 Ti 1440p was 47 frames per second, DLSS 68 frames per second, at 1080, 76 frames per second, and 97 frames with DLSS. Microsoft Flight Simulator, I don't understand. The results were the same for um, 
1440p, 1080p, 37 frames per second for the 6800. And for the 3060 Ti, it was 36 frames per second for 1440p and 1080p. I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but the, it was on the high preset. And I got the same results either way. So, I mean, this is a good card for both of them. Whether you're a, whether you're on the budget or not. I mean, uh, for bang for the buck, I would definitely recommend the, the gaming trio. But... If you really want the 6800, these are the results. So I can't really tell you guys what to do with your money. It is your money, but at the end of the day, I think the 6800 is a little overpriced, especially what I got it for at 880 after taxes and shipping. So hope you guys liked the video. Please hit like and subscribe. And um, hope you guys enjoy the rest of my videos as well. So have a good day, and I'm going to try to keep this going.